you're watching QAC TV and you're watching a show called Commissioner's Corner, one of the things the new elected commissioners wanted to do, and they promised you during the campaign, and they're doing a great job of doing it now, is communicating with the public. They're showing up almost weekly or at least once a month to talk to you about the most important issues that face you as citizens and face them as county commissioners. I'm delighted to have with me Mark Anderson today. Commissioner Anderson, thank you for being with us. It's always a pleasure, Fred. And there's some hope of spring coming. Uh, I'm told tomorrow. <laughs> Rumor has it 70 degree and something you and I haven't seen for a long time, the sun, right? Yeah, that's right. Okay, hey, let's talk about a bunch of topics. Energy is always on people's minds. Wind turbines. Do so you have an update or some information you'd like to share with us uh, on that? Fred, uh, many people probably have read about uh, Apex Energy's efforts to put in a turbine uh, farm uh, on a farm in Kent County. Right. What this basically would do is put uh, anywhere from 20 to 30 wind turbines that generate some electricity uh, across one or two farmers' fields and they get a 25-year lease. The thing of it is, uh, these turbines reach a height of almost 550 feet. A lot taller than what's out of Chesapeake College, I'm told. Is that correct? Oh, oh yeah. And uh, if you think about what flies every fall and every spring through that area. So well, it's a mi migrant geese that uh, a lot of people uh, uh, make money doing guides and so forth. Um, I am currently looking into uh, a way to uh, get us a part of uh, our very good uh, Senator Steve Hershey's bill, Senate Bill 938, uh, which would, uh, if passed, the state would then uh, delegate the uh, an authority, an approval authority to the local commission. Okay. And so you'd I, have the final say in the two. Well, we would have the initial say. Okay. Uh, the final say would uh, actually be with the planning and zoning and so forth. But if we said no way, then it stops right. It stops there. the project right. Uh, there. I, I'm not a fan. Okay. Good. Yeah. The important thing is you guys were right on top of the issue, and uh, I've heard a lot of people say, "Hey, 600, 500 foot towers." The one at Chesapeake College is what, 150 feet or something? I can't imagine that's. They think of Washington, mind you. Yeah, that's a tall wind turbine. Uh, but anyway, Steve Hershey is leading that effort. Uh, our excellent senator from uh, the three county area, and uh, uh, I intend to put a resolution in on the next legislative session to join. Uh, ask him to allow us to join his efforts. He's already uh, out doing work to get the Kent County Commission. Uh, that authority. Same type of thing. Yep. Good, good. Moving on to another topic, how we handle minor site plans. Yeah. Just share with that. Uh, this is very subtle, but I think it, it's extremely important. You know, this is local government, and you need to respond uh, to people and their inquiries, uh, complaints, uh, applause uh, occasionally. But they need to know what's going on in their neighborhoods. Sure. Uh, in the past, we, when we do a minor subdivision, the property is not posted. So neighbors have no idea what's, what's going, going on, on until it either shows up in the paper or some flap occurs. Uh, I'll give you uh, an example. The, the State Street uh, Homeless Shelter mm -hmm. was a minor subdivision. So the people there were not notified of this and didn't get uh, the, uh, uh, the heads up to, to find out and be aware. So uh, that has been changed. Okay. All minor subdivisions uh, from I think last month from now until it gets changed and it won't as long as I'm in there will be posted. Little sign. There's exactly a, what's going to go on and exactly, give me information. And, and where to call to get the details. Okay. All part of your communications plan. That's okay. exactly right. Look, local government. Uh, should be of, by, and for the people. That sounds, I think someone else said that. <laughs> we'll, we'll credit you for this program. <laughs> In any case, uh, it's just a, a very subtle change, but I think important. Sure. And it so. makes it, you can just walk up to the sign, there'll be phone numbers and an idea of what's going e on. Exactly correct. If it's in my neighborhood, I'd appreciate that. Hey, a, a topic I know that's uh, dear to your heart, and as a former health educator, one I'm concerned about 
It's the availability of inappropriate publications from minors and the possible problems that, that will lead to it. How about share that with us? Well, I, you know, I have some props. Uh, and I happened to walk into an establishment uh, and saw these. Just, uh, you know. Let me take one there. Okay. Yeah, you talk and I'm just going to. Yeah. Uh, High Times and Weed World. What the heck is that? And I picked it up and looked at it and uh, scanned through it. And actually, uh, it's a, uh, a very colorful, well done uh, source of information of how to grow, where to grow, where to obtain various uh, seeds and this and that. And I, I thought, you know, some uh, miner is going to see this and it's just another piece of breaking down the resistance uh, to try something. Sure. Uh, oh, hey, if it's in the stores and all that, it must be it Must fun. be okay. Yeah. Uh, I, uh, I put in a bill uh, to uh, require these types of magazines to be behind the counter okay. and only sold to adults. So they're not staring out there next to Sports Illustrated and Time magazine right, or something. Yeah. And, and, you know, where these were, an infant could crawl in and look at it. Of course, an infant wouldn't know what to do, but sometimes Hopefully. decisions yeah. are, are poor. And I can, I can tell you, despite uh, testimony uh, against this, that uh, we, we shouldn't withhold information from children, uh, the state's attorney uh, made a very compelling argument that in his 20 years of work, uh, never once has he seen minors using marijuana lead to a good end. No. And I'll give you an example of one that happened just recently. A senior at Ken Island High School, a tip was raised uh, to uh, the local uh, deputy that is in the hall, and the name was given and surveillance was conducted. And lo and behold, uh, this senior uh, was a drug dealer selling drugs to kids inside the high school. He was picked up uh, riding uh, uh, in his paid-for uh, diesel pickup truck. And a nice little business going. Yeah, exactly. And when he was uh, apprehended, he was very relaxed, uh, ho-hum. Uh, they said, well, you know, you, this is pretty serious. He said, no, it didn't. I got less than 10 grams. Now, this is what legalizing, uh, or not legalizing, but decriminalizing marijuana uh, did to this thought process. Sure. Well, then I, it's I can do whatever I want with this. I think it's no big deal. Uh, Ten grams. Uh, yeah. He will find out that there's a substantial difference. The thinking processes for minors uh, is not the same as adults, and because of that, they're treated more leniently in the courts. Uh, so, any case, uh, right now I have the bill uh, being examined for uh, the. Uh, constitutionality. Uh, there was a, you know, a First Amendment uh, issue raised, so we'll have that checked. Okay. Uh, in my opinion, and in the opinion of our uh, uh, advisors, this is a community standards issue. And to prove that, uh, the Drug Free Coalition uh, w went it to all the outlets of these and asked them to voluntarily remove them. And as of today, proud to say every single one of our stores that had these Took pulled on. them. Well, very good. Good. So, um, congratulations to them and the Drug Free Coalition. Uh, they got a steep task, but uh, we have cooperation. And again, this summer, you're not, you're not asking that these be made illegal. You just no. want them so they won't be blatantly sitting out where kids can get them. They'll be behind the counter, and you can go up and ask for them, but you're not going to um, be able to grab uh, it. Do you, do you see Playboy or Penthouse? Or no, they're it? behind the counter. And you have the same thing. Well. Same okay. difference. Uh, it's a community standards thing. Uh, I don't think we should encourage uh, a diminishment of drug use amongst kids. And I am the liaison to the Drug Free Coalition. And some of the stories that you hear and see, uh, the examples of, are pretty terrible. They're sad and scary. Uh, they involve children, uh, drinking binges and pot smoking. And it's going on in the middle schools. It's earlier and earlier every year, doesn't it? Uh, it's, and nothing good comes of it. Okay. So I mean, it was just an effort to do that. The bill's. Uh, sort of steaded at this point, uh, waiting for the opinion. 
but so long, uh, frankly, as the uh, the stores uh, uh, subscribe to the community standard, yeah, there's no need for the bill. And that was at a pretty point. good thing of our local business, wasn't it? Taking off those newsstand type uh, display cases and putting that's good. Well, that they're part of the community, good. and they they buy into the community standards. So just by right. raising the issue, we got that stepped up. Yeah, good for you. So good if it you. saves one kid from making a bad choice, it was worth it. You can sleep a little better at night, right? That's oh, a good man. one. That's right. Mark, how about everybody's favorite topic, Ken Island sewer? <laughs> <laughs> well, District Four, South Ken Island, is uh, is my district, Ugh. and uh, I, I have to say that during the the campaign, uh, I was uh, a skeptic of, of this and. A skeptic for good reasons. Uh, and a lot of the people had advised me of the disaster of the step system in Olympia, Washington. Researched it, they're absolutely correct. The step system as it was put into place in Olympia, the actual cost to maintain and operate it is twice the cost to actually put it in. Well, that, that's a catastrophe waiting to happen. The other major issue uh, you know, I'm 70 years old, uh, my uh, uh, friends and colleagues are of the same age. Uh, a number of them are on fixed income. And, you know, 100 bucks a month for uh, the operating cost and, uh, you know, paying off the installation. They couldn't do it. They said, adds I, up I, quickly, yes. I, I got to move. So uh, here's where uh, I am on it. I've looked, the step system works in other places. Uh, and so I'm in the process of evaluating, it's a, a technique called variance analysis. Okay, this system is the same here and there, but this one, the costs are very low, this one very high. Well, you just see, well, what did these guys on? do that yeah, these guys sure. didn't? Save us some um, money. Uh, so we, uh, 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 that process is ongoing. Uh, Mike Clark uh, from Social Services has found uh, three, four different grant sources for to, for means testing, uh, some of which can go as high as half the cost of the installation. So there is that. Uh, we are in the process of conducting many uh, meetings in the evenings and on weekends. And you really encourage people to go to those. You told me off air. Right? Uh, there again, it gets back to an informed public. Get the facts uh, and you get one-on-one -on -one, uh, uh, questions answered with uh, with knowledgeable staff people one of the things that, uh, uh, that, that that people were confused about and drawing incorrect conclusions Commission voted 5-0 uh, to do the design phase for the phase one uh, and you'll see phase one here uh, Ken Island Estates and Roman Coke on the Bay uh, there are about 700 uh, homes there uh, they generate most of the failed septic complaints uh, and it's a large enough group uh, and so here's where I am there's no higher responsibility of an elected official than the health safety and welfare your citizens. Uh, I don't have the luxury when uh, the health officer says there are 37 cases that could have resulted, one, on, one or more could have resulted uh, from uh, association with raw sewage. I mean, I'm a history buff. I, you know, in, in, in all of recorded history, what have human beings in raw sewage gotten along? Not well. Uh, not very not well. well. So, uh, I voted for the RFP to do the design work, and so did four of my colleagues. Uh, the reason being, it's twofold. One, got to know the cost. Now, you know, phase one is a uh, uh, $22 million expense, but that's to build it. Uh, we spent uh, uh, probably more than a little bit more than a million bucks to do the engineering design for almost half of this project and also including the interceptor line and also uh, the main all the way up uh, to Terrapin Park. Uh, right now, uh, the estimated cost for this entire project is $32 million. It, uh, 
that's net of a of a money that we will get from the flush tax to help knock down some of the cost. Uh, this will give us an engineering design from which competitive bids can then give us the actual cost. Our professional engineers, PEs, licensed uh, in the uh, wastewater facilities, have done a good faith estimate of the cost and added 20%. This will give us what the thing costs. Yeah. Because if we're going to tell people this is what you got to pay for 20 years and this is the estimated operating cost, be nice to have a great deal of confidence in what that says. Real what numbers. That is. Real numbers. Real numbers. Uh, the other thing is that, you know, uh, th this commission has not decided to put this sewer in. Uh, the commission uh, has looked at it from, let's see what it costs. And two, if we don't put it in and uh, we'll have a plan so that if health issues uh, are connected to uh, the sewer issue, we can jump right in and get it done. Be a lot more expensive at that point in time because we won't be able to use the flush tax money. So it's an ongoing project, Absolutely. a lot of engineering looking into, a lot of discussion among the commissioners and the public needs to know. Please come to your meetings and get the information. Uh, I know that uh, there's an effort to discourage people from going. Uh, you know, don't believe it. Go find out for yourself what is going on and how it specifically will affect you. And, you know, hey, this is local government. Uh, the people that are there are some of the top folks in county government. They are there to impart information, to answer specific questions so that we can get each separate lot designed because you know the the well in one lot's not the same as the other, oh, and the houses oh, are located. Different. So you need to have a substantial number of these designed, so that we can figure out what the total cost is going to be. Good, and okay. that's where we are. And that's important. Please go to the meetings. They're posted on the website. Find out when they are. And like you say, get a lot of individual attention and a lot of individual yeah. questions. And, you know, for those that uh, you know think I flipped on this, you know, uh, you know we we don't make a decision on this uh, buying the construction phase for another 10 months, or well, probably eight months now. You know, that's when the rubber meets the road. Uh, the stuff I handed out in the campaign, uh, research and implement the best solution to resolve issues for the Ken Island sewer system. You know, in my business experience, uh, 35 years of reasonably successful business experience, you know, I have been taught get all the facts you can possibly get and then make the right, make decision. The right decision. That's what I'll do. Good. And okay. when, the time when the time comes. You have the right information and the public will have the right information. Uh, that is absolutely correct. Well, that's the answer. I'll end up on what I've talked with all your colleagues with. Uh, the public perception is right now is uh, you guys are getting along as county commissioners. There's not a lot of arguing going on, fussing. It seems to be a very friendly atmosphere. And the important thing is that you're working together as a team. Any comments you want to make on that? Well, yeah. We've had, uh, not to make criticisms of other commissions, because this is not easy it's work. A tough job. Tough and job. It, anybody that thinks this is a part-time job is nuts. <laughs> this, I work full-time. I see your car out here almost seven I days a week. I work full-time, and then I got an office up at the... Uh, the Percy uh, Thomas Center. Uh, one of the advantages that a number of us had is in the primary, we had no Democratic opponent. And so uh, three of us were essentially elected. Sure, after the primary. We didn't waste any time. Uh, we got right down here and started interviewing uh, department heads, uh, asking questions, getting filled in, and so forth. Uh, that not only gave us additional information, but it also began the pattern of seeing how the other guy thinks, seeing what they bring to the, uh, the party. And I can tell the people of this county, 
every one of my colleagues bring something special to government. Uh, I like all of my colleagues. Do I agree with them every time? No, of course not. But I want to agree agreeably, best that I can. Sure. Because there's some issues that, you know, You're your, not heart, gonna agree your heart and soul was in, yeah, sure. and you, sometimes uh, you, you, you push the envelope. Uh, what people see, and I encourage people to watch these, because, again, that's letting you know what local government's up to, is real. You, know, you can't fake collegiality. No. It's either there or it isn't. Sure. And we work at it, we like each other, and we respect each other. Yeah. And I want to re emphasize this. Every one of us brings something special that others can use to come to good decisions yeah. well, and, and run a good government. Yeah. Well, I think, as I say, looking at the first 100 day, days, you ought to be complimented the way the meetings are run, the way you're staying on task, and like you said, you're all getting together and bringing to the table you know, your particular skills and expertise, and it seems to be working. Uh, I think it is. Uh, the proof of the pudding is, uh, you know... Four years from there. <laughs> well, yeah, no, I don't even think about that. I, I'll be 75 years old in four oh, years. Oh, we're getting old, aren't we, Mark? Well, the alternative is pretty poor. I, I'm, I'm, I'm on the old side of here. Let's go with that. <laughs> well, look, unless you have anything else you'd like to comment well, I, All I want to do is say I thank you for doing this. Uh, it's a great idea. Uh, we discussed uh, off uh, record how we could expand uh, this and other uh, government activities to the, the people, uh, and we're, we're going to pursue that and see if we can Great. get uh, ourselves and important things like emergency messages and so forth into more people's homes. We have a valuable tool for the citizens, for the elected officials, and our professional staff, and that's QAC TV. So that's we right. appreciate your support. I'm, I'm, I'm in. Okay, and Mark, thank you very much for Fred, being with us as today. As always, I enjoy it. Ever since the first time I spent uh, 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 some time with you uh, on the porch drinking coffee, and, and I haven't, do done, that now I haven't done it since. The spring and, is here. Okay, right. we'll do that again. All right. I'm Fred McNeil. You've been watching QAC. TV, you've been watching Commissioner's Corner. We had with us Commissioner Mark Anderson, who talked about a number of topics, and I guess what he's em emphasizing, like all the commissioners, come to the public meetings, ask them questions, and please watch programs like Commissioner's Corner. I'm Fred McNeil. My time's up. Thank you for your time. We're going to see you next time.